Welcome to this week's edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is heading. I'm Jason McIntosh. It is Friday the 17th of December 2021. As always, this is general commentary and doesn't take your personal situation into account. All right, with that said, let's jump over to our first chart. The S&P 500, well, it has been another interesting week. We had the, uh, the US Federal Reserve meet during the week. And they confirm their they confirm that there's really a, a series of rate hikes along the way, and uh, and they they also confirm that they're planning on on continuing to to wind back their stimulus program, which has been so so you know, prominently pushing the market over the last over the last year or so. And uh, it's um, look the market what the way the market reacted was really interesting. It the market had. Um, I'm going to zoom in on this area in a sec, but the market had quite a positive reaction to it, as if the market said, well, look, this isn't as bad as we thought, and uh, it's continued to, to push higher. So let's jump to the to a four hourly chart. I like looking at these, um, these hourly and four hourlies because you can really get to see the internal makeup of the market. It tells you a lot more than just looking at a, at a day bar on its own. So this is the, um, this is the, the, the period where the, the, the Fed came out with their with their commentary on, on what they're planning to do. And you can see the market had this really strong reaction to that. Shot shut up higher in the it was right near the end of the um, end of the end of the trading session. And it actually like ticked up and made a new all-time high. Now it's um it's pulled back over the last last day or so. It's interesting when we when we look at this, so I want to look at the you look at the move off that low we had early in December up through to the the high just prior to the, the Fed meeting, and we put the Fibonacci's on it. Fibonacci is always interesting to look at because they give you um, ideas where markets can pull back to when they do have their, their, their pullbacks and consolidations. And in this case, we can see, look, it came right back to that 50% sort of region. And uh, look, it's just classic of how, how these markets often operate. And then it's from that 50% retracement that we had the strong, strong rally higher. Look, I've got to say that it really does appear that this market wants to go up and and and, and break to new all-time highs. We did have that short shortly break up here, but the market's since pulled back. But I, I think there's every chance now that we're going to see the market maybe consolidate a touch more around here, but then have another crack at making a new high. So look, we could see this sort of price action develop over the next next few sessions. Maybe it's you know, a little bit more more sort of work around, but then it does you know, it does does kick higher. That's what the price action currently gives a feel that it's going to going to do. And uh, I think unless we see this level from a, a few days ago break, I think we do need to give the bull the benefit of the doubt. And uh, yeah, I think the likelihood does favour those those new all time highs in the um, in the near term. So look, that that said, I do maintain a, a cautious stance towards this market. You've probably heard me talking about this over the last few weeks, maybe even a bit longer. That there are look, there are some flags to be to be aware of in the market. Notwithstanding, the um, the bullish trend remains intact. So let's just clean this up, and I want to show you what I what I mean. Uh, so for this, I'm going to jump over to a daily chart. Don't need all that that inner workings there. So we'll get to the daily chart. I'm going to put on a on a on a study which I think is really interesting to look at. So it's a, the S&P 500 stocks above their 200 day moving average. So let's select that. And okay, so let me just get the proportions right to sort of like work work through what I want to have a look at here. Let's move things around a touch and so what we've been, what we've seen. So let's just get a bit more data even on, on that. So we get the um, we get the lows. We get the lows from the, the the COVID period. So just fit all that to the screen. So what we saw, what we saw after the COVID period, of course, all the just about every stock was below their 200-day moving average. Since the low, we had this um, process of more and more stocks getting above their their 200-day moving average, which you expect to see in a in a in a healthy bullish market. That's what happens: more and more stocks get above their 200-day moving average. What we've had since around April, so since April, 
as we know, the markets continued to, to rally. But what we see on this, this is the breadth, it's called the breadth of the market, the number of stocks which are, which are moving up or down with the market. What we've had since April is the number of stocks which have been participating in this rally have been in decline. So it's fewer and fewer stocks which have been driving it higher. And the ones driving it higher have tended to be those big tech names. Of course, there's some smaller stocks and some mid stocks in there which are rallying too, but it's the big tech stocks which have been pushing the market. So we've had this declining breadth. That's, that's a, look, that, that's a, uh, looks a concern. It's a concern which I've had, had for a while. You know, we want to stay with the bullish trend, but we want to be aware of signs which suggest that you know, maybe there's some, some weakness, underlying weakness developing. Now, I want to go back to some previous periods and just show you how this has worked in the past. So let me just get the set up the graph so it's nice and um, so it's clear for us to see. So we've got this um, got this period in here. So this was back in 2017. So we've got a rising market, but then we look at the breadth of that market. The breadth was deteriorating. Didn't lead to anything dire on this occasion. We only had a you know, only had a, a modest modest pullback. And then this series of, of declining stocks, it, it bottomed and then started rising again and continued upwards with the, um, with the market. So declining breath isn't necessarily a sign that something dire is going to happen. Sometimes it's quite, quite benign. So we'll go back and I've got some more examples of this to show you. So I've got another period in here. So this is going back to 2014. So this is a little bit different this time. And it's actually the most similar example we have to what's, um, what's going on in the market in terms of the, the, the length of time that the decline in, in breadth was going on. So you can see where the market was rising. And now look at the decline in breadth. So that's, that's not dissimilar to what we're currently seeing. And of course, this led into, led into a period here, which was quite unstable for, for several months before the market finally did, did base. It worked through a a longer consolidation and then then continued higher. Uh, we've got other periods like like this one in here, which again wasn't wasn't much to to worry about. It was a relatively shorter period, uh, but rising market, declining breath, did result in in a pullback, but it wasn't anything anything of note. And I have one more to show you, which is um, it just shows again why it's so important to be aware of. Uh, the markets, um, you know, the, the, the structure of the, the you know, how the, how the market's underlying structure is um, is being put together. What's driving what's driving the market? This period through here, so this was leading into the the GFC. So we had a, a rising market, but the the breadth was giving way. There were fewer and fewer stocks driving the market, led to quite a quite a disastrous period. I don't think we're heading into that. I don't think that's on the on the horizon at, at this point in time, but nonetheless, it gives you an idea of, um, of what can happen. Here we are back to today, so this is back to our current market. Look, one one thing that is um, is possible, um, it's possible that that this um, you know, this this shakeout we've had in the market through oh, probably probably through here, we had this really big decline in, in breadth. It has been bouncing back. So look, there is a case to be made that this period of divergence is ending and maybe the breath is turning up and this won't. That will um, it's possibly that, that negates this, um, you know, diffuses this pattern and we go back into a period of stocks rising and getting above their 200-day moving average. That's quite possible. So it's just one of those indicators we want to keep an eye on. And we don't want to see this. Um, we don't want to see this continued decline because at some stage, if it could, this continues declining, the market is almost certainly going to give way to a to a larger larger consolidation. So look, one of the flags, but let's um, let's just watch that one. So now let's um, jump over to the Nasdaq. So the Nasdaq, the bullish trend is um, look, the bullish trend in the Nasdaq remains in place. So you know, look at it from those. From those those lows back in 2020, and uh, look, it's a there's there's nothing to tell you there that this this trend is over, 
and that it's topping out. The trend remains in place. There is a consolidation unfolding here and we need to see where it's going to, how it's going to, going to work its way through. But the underlying trend is, look, is clearly up. There's not a topping pattern in place there. So let's, um, let's jump over to a, to a four hourly chart. Again, I want to have a look at the internal structure of this market because that's, that's interesting on its own. So look, when you look at the internals for this, it's um, interesting to have a look at, well, let's, look, let's first look at the Fibonacci's. So we've got the, the put the Fib levels on there. And like the S&P 500, we've seen the market come back, you know, it's really pretty much smack on to its 50% retracement, which is, you know, it's always interesting when it almost works out, you know, works out to the, um, to the, to the point, the, the reversal. And then we've had the, the strong rebound uh, we're getting some more consolidation through here, but at this stage you've got an impulsive rally and a, and a corrective looking period. So again, it's one of those things that despite the concerns I have with the underlying breadth of the market, that I think you know, you've got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. But um, what I also thought would be interesting to have a look at here is the, um, is the, the, the structure of this this advance. So there's a there's a theory called Elliott Wave Theory. I studied this a lot during my um, in the early 90s when I was just starting in the markets. And what it is, it talks about how the um, the markets move in in five wave patterns. And there's a really clear five wave pattern here. So that's why I just want to show it to you. So you've got wave one, the pullbacks wave two, you get a big wave three, pullback wave four, and then it tops in wave five. Then often you'll hear me talking about ABC patterns. So ABC is a zigzag correction. So we've got the, the A, B, C, and now we've got the market looking like it's going to start rallying again. You know, it's possible that you know, we can move the B over to there and we get a little bit more on the downside. Maybe the, the zigzag comes back to there. But look, that's your classic bullish picture. You've got the five wave advance and the, the zigzag, zigzag, uh, Correction. It's, um, I don't use Elliott Wave very much for what I what I do nowadays. It's too it's too hit and miss. It's very very discretionary. Two people can come up in completely different wave counts, but when it does stand out so clearly, yeah, it's interesting. I thought I'd just uh, just show you. There's all sorts of different ways to to analyze markets, and um, so look. Let's just get rid of that. Jump back to the the daily. And look, as I say, I think we need to give this bull the benefit of the doubt. I'll tell you about a mistake I made during the, during the, the mid-1990s, around 97, 98 thereabouts. I was, I was really focused on, on trying to pick tops, preempt the top of the market and position ahead of a market turn. And what I learned during that period was that it was better to, to give the trend the benefit of the doubt and, uh, and, not, try and not try and pick those tops. It's... it's um, Look, I think I end up being about end up being wrong by about eighteen months. There was a big correction. The you know the dot com bust basically hit, and it was a big correction. But I was wrong by eighteen months. And if you're out by eighteen months, you're basically wrong. It doesn't matter that you had this big picture view which turned out right. You know, you, you know I missed eighteen months of, of strong upside gain, so it was the wrong view. So I've learned from that. Let the trend run its course, and use your trailing stops to to get you out when the when the trend changes. And uh, if you're interested to know more about trailing stops, you'll find information about my Motion Trader subscription service below this video. Just click on the Show More button, and I've got a free training series which talks about trailing stops and how I set them and giving them giving stocks room to move. And I've also got a low cost trial of my subscription service, which which may be interesting. Okay, let's look at the Russell just briefly. Just only want to touch on this briefly today because we've talked about this a lot in recent weeks. It's, um, it's come right back to a support zone just through, through here. Come right back to support. It looks, like it's, it's, um, it looks like it's in need of a bounce. It looks like, I, I think it's gonna, given the structure of what I'm seeing in the S&P and the NASDAQ, I think it's gonna struggle to break through this, at least on its first attempt. I think we're gonna see a rebound. I think maybe we're going to see, you know, maybe maybe something like like that start to develop, and then how how that unfolds, that will that will will give us some more clues to 
to what's going on in this market. You know, this is another one of those breath warnings because there's 2,000 stocks in the Russell. They're small, smaller cap stocks, and they're, they're, you know, a lot of them are hitting 52-week lows. So it's, you know, it's, it's another one of those you know, clouds, I think you could say, over the market. And we want to see want to see this clear up before we could say, look, we're we're really confident the market is going to continue to to push higher. But um, you know, for now, I think the downside is probably limited over the next next couple of weeks. I think it needs a rebound, and that could be whilst the the S and P and the Nasdaq maybe they make new highs. It's um, we'll see how this plays out over the next um, next couple of weeks. And okay, so let's go and look at the um, the all ordinary, so the ASX 200. So this continues to shape up in a very interesting manner. We've got this big triangle formation. And as I told you last week, these triangles are one of my favorite patterns because they're, they're often a reliable pattern in that when you get a break from them, you can get some, uh, you get some really good, good moves. And this is really um, this is really starting to coil up nicely. You could, at the moment, you'd say this is a this is a textbook uh, triangle pattern. So triangles often work in there's five five waves to a to a triangle, and uh, what that you often find you get from the start you get the A, B, C, D, and E. So you can count them in you know, alphabetically. You get the five five ways, and we use the um, the, the letters to, to mark that out. And that's what we're getting so far. It looks like we're in the E wave. So if this was to go to textbook, and lots of things don't go to textbook, that's why you know, these things are yeah. You know, there's so much discretion in in, in in any any form of analysis, and that's often why, that's why I use the algorithms to make my trading consistent. But uh, but look, I still like to try and analyze these these uh, these these patterns, and what you would expect from this pattern is that uh, once this E wave finished forming, we get a break to the top side, probably get some sort of return move, and then you get the continuation of the rally. Look, that's how the all lords is currently shaping up. When I just look at this in isolation, you know. Let's not worry about the, the breadth of the market, what the Russell's doing, all that stuff. If we just look at this as a chart, that's how this chart is shaping up. So, look, what what I've done, notwithstanding my concerns, I've lifted the hedging, which I told you I've had over the last, last couple of weeks. It's um, I, I don't want to fight a bullish trend. If the, the bullish trend is still in place, which it appears to be, and we have a pattern which it looks like it's shaping up to be a continuation pattern and it potentially leading to higher prices. I'm not going to fight that. I'm not going to say I think the market needs to pull back more. It doesn't matter what I think. It's about what the market appears to be doing and what the possibilities are currently shaping up to be. And this looks like the highest probability possibility I'm, I'm currently seeing. So look, I think that's the way... Uh, well, look, that's the way I'm positioning my portfolio. I'm staying long all my stocks. I've got my trailing stops in place. If if this happens to to top out here and, and start to lose momentum and, and turn to the downside, but while that that bigger picture trend is in place, that's what I'm doing. I'm staying with my longs. I'm giving them room to move and uh, and and trying to maximise my upside from this trend. I've got stocks which are up, you know, 100, 200. I've got one stock which is up 500 odd percent. I'm not going to start selling them because I'm got, I've got concerns about breath, but I am going to have trailing stops in place to get me out should things turn over. Okay, so let's look at an opportunity. And, uh, and, and by the way, if you're enjoying this video, if you're getting some value, please hit that like button. Really important. It tells YouTube that people like it and then YouTube shows more people. And I keep making more videos. And also, leave me a comment, even if it's just, hey, I like the video, thanks. It's, um, it's another good sign that goes to YouTube, which, which really does help me. All right, so there's an interesting opportunity on the make, which I've been watching for the last last um, few weeks. And you're probably not going to guess which one it is. It's um, You might be thinking, oh, is it gold, is it copper, is it uranium? It's not. It's Chinese stocks. And that's not very helpful. Okay, it's Chinese stocks. So let's jump over and have a look at um, have a look at those. And what we see, 
what we see here is um, is really interesting. So this is the Chinese A50, A50 index. So I'm going to just scrunch this up for a moment and draw some support on this chart. So actually go further back, go all the way over here. So there's a support region on here between around 1500 and 14500. Where's 14500? Yeah, it's thereabouts, round about, round about there. Let's say, let's say that's it. Okay, big support region. It's been in place since back in 2015. Previous highs, so it was resistance, broke above resistance. Now that becomes support. So once the resistance is broken, the resistance becomes support. Gave the market support here. It's given the market support here. Okay, so let's go out a little bit. Let's let's get a little bit more detail. Now, just through here is interesting. There are there are a couple of interesting little chart patterns. Wonder whether you can see them. You know, test your chart. Like you can just maybe even pause the video and see if you can spot a couple of patterns through here. So here they are. We've got a little triangle pattern in here. So we've got that triangle pattern there. And so the market broke out from the triangle, had a run, had a bit of a pullback. And we've got a pattern in here. So this is a this is a bit of a, a bullish wedge formation. Not the cleanest wedge, but it is that, that wedging sort of formation. The market's broken up from that. What it looks like? It looks like we've had, remember before I spoke about the um, the zigzag correction? You know, you got your classic zigzag down there. Big bullish run, zigzag correction, come back to support. And now we've got the market looking like it's now starting to gain some momentum and rebound off that support. So that's really interesting. So what I want to do here, I'm going to jump to the four hourly again. Let's get some little, little bit more detail on this section. So let's jump to the four hourly chart. And what we have, we've got the breakout of this wedge up to a high. Um, I think that might have been earlier in the week. And now we're getting the pullback. So Fibonacci's. Fibonacci's are very interesting to draw in this sort of situation. Now here we are. Very interesting. Just broken below the 50%, but we're still above the 61.8%. So we're still in the, the Fibonacci retrace pocket. So this is interesting what what happens here how do you how do you play this sort of scenario well some people would would, um, would say okay i'm going to buy the dip and they'd buy it here problem with doing that is like what if this what if this pattern fails what if this market continues just to just to peel away and you know, it just comes back down here that that could happen so that's why i don't want to buy the dip because i don't know where the dip's going to finish dipping so that's that's not my play my play is I want to bind a strength. So I'm going to look at a previous high. I'm going to pick this recent high there. And if I were playing this, and I'm, I'm not going to play this. I've got capital allocated elsewhere, so I probably won't get to this one. But if I were playing this, I'd say, look, if if this market can break above this um, this previous high, maybe we look for price action, you know, like, like that. If it can break, a, if it can break above break above that high, well then that could be his point to say, okay, well this is now regaining its upward momentum and maybe this moves, moves on to the, the upside. And if it doesn't break that point, well, no damage done, you don't get in. So that's a risk management strategy. So let's, um, let's jump back to the daily just briefly. And yeah, so look, this is a sort of pattern. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit sort of pattern that um, when you look at it like this, it's a sort of pattern where you, know, you could come back to in six months time and see, you know, see this, this general, general sort of like upward move develop. It you know, probably wouldn't be as clean as that, but, but yeah, it's a sort of, you know, we've got this rounding turnaround and then you know, move back up, move back to new all time highs. And uh, so, look, I think that's a that's a possibility. It's a, I think it's a good um, good probability possibility as well. So it's an interesting one. And if you're interested in this, don't worry. You don't need to go to you know the, the Chinese market to play this. So the the Chinese A50, it's the it's a, the 50 largest mainland Chinese stocks. And there's an 
ETF on the ASX. It's called the, the Van Eck um, A50 ETF. The ticker code is CETF. CETF. And, uh, and that gives exposure to pretty much what you're seeing on this chart. So look, it's an um, interesting idea for anyone interested in ETFs. Maybe go and check that out and see whether that's, that's to your liking. Okay, well that's a wrap for this week. Please hit that like button. Let YouTube know you liked it, if of course you did. And uh, I look forward to coming back and let's do it all again next week. Until then, thanks for joining me.